welcome to Plugins. Where does this thing go? Uh, my name is Bill Bowling. I'm a senior web developer at Turner. Um, I turn, the team I, let's see, start back up a little bit. I've been doing Drupal since about Drupal 5. Uh, for the last three years, I've been a little more serious about it, uh, working at Drupal 8. Uh, the, I work at the core services group at Turner. I've been there for about three years now. Uh, the team that I work with, we're responsible for developing uh, modules that are used by the Turner brands. <coughs> So like TBS, TNT, NBA, uh, .com, Turner Classic Movies, Cartoon Network, um, they all use modules that, that we develop for them. Um, so this this is like several million unique visitors uh, a month using our stuff. <coughs> so we're definitely in Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility territory. Um, today I'm going to be talking about plugins. <coughs> So they can seem a little bit daunting, but they're really not all that complicated uh, once you play around with them a bit. So I'm going to be talking about this today, uh, what plugins are. I'll be describing the Drupal plugin API a little bit, um, how to use plugins that are already there in Drupal, how to create your own plugins, as well as a couple of advanced topics. So starting off, what are plugins? Uh, Drupal.org. Uh, documentation describes them as small swappable pieces of functionality and that's pretty cool um, it does describe what they do uh, when I was learning about them I found it a little easier to understand it <coughs> uh, with the Drupalize me description which is plugins are a design pattern and by that I mean they're a way of solving a problem uh, so before I go on uh, who's worked with Drupal before Drupal 8 okay so you all remember hooks um, Okay, so the problem that plugins solve is basically how can one module provide functionality for a mo other module or override the functionality that's already there. So in Drupal, Drupal 7 and earlier, you'll remember we had hooks. Uh, you would implement hooks in your module at the appropriate places where you wanted to execute code. And that was cool, except that every time Drupal upgraded to a major version, all the hooks, you know, or maybe not all of them, but a whole lot of them would go away. So you'd have to go through your module, find the hooks that had been replaced, find the replacements for them, learn how to use those, change those all out into your module, and then away you go. And then the next major version would come along, rinse, repeat. It was kind of a drag. Um, now Drupal 8 comes along. We've got objects and classes now. So now we can extend classes and override methods in those, and that works pretty well too. Um, the problem with uh, both extending classes and with the hooks, um, the same thing as with the hooks, that class that you're extending, uh, the, the method that you're overriding, that might go away, and then you've got to find the new class, find the new methods, etc. cetera. Um, the nice thing about plugins is they're completely standalone. They're just all by themselves, uh, no dependencies on anything else. And any plugin of a given type can be swapped out for any other plugin um, of that same type, no problem, seamlessly. Um, this is all made possible by the Drupal plugin API. Uh, the plugin API, this defines a way for modules to provide a plugin type. This is for functionality that can be adapted to different situations. And then other modules uh, create their own plugins of that type according to the functionality that they need for it. So the plugin API. Uh, there are four parts to the plugin API. Uh, there are a lot of fours in the plugin system, as we'll see. Uh, the first thing that you get with the plugin API is a plugin type. Now, this defines your plugin interface, how your plugin will be used and instantiated, and how the plugin is used. Uh, the next part is discovery, and this is how Drupal plugin. Uh, discovery methods include annotation, uh, YAML, static, discovery and hook discovery, but the most common one by far is annotation. And for any plugins that you're likely to develop, unless you're writing something for in core, annotation is what you're going to be using. And so that's the only one I'm really going to talk about today. Um, <clears throat> you can find out about the others in the document that I'll mention later. After discovery is plugin factory. So we've got lots of different plugins that can be discovered and instantiated. And the plugin factory is responsible for making sure that that all happens as it should. And then finally, our plugins themselves. And a plugin is simply an implementation of a plugin type definition. Um, that's all it is. 
So how do we use plugins? This just go over some standard Drupal ones and show you how to just use one out of the box if you want to. Um, so in core, we have plugins for blocks, menus, field types, field widgets, field formatters, uh, rest resources, image effects and formatters, validation constraints, data types, and views. Um, I have views highlighted there because views uses plugins all over the place. If you want to know more than any, you ever want to find out about plugins, um, get lost in views and you'll see a whole lot of stuff there. So, in order to use a plugin, you first have to find the plugin that you want to use. So you can use your Drupal console for this, run Drupal debug plugin, and this will give you a list of all the plugin types on your Drupal instance, whether they're core, um, contributed, or whatever. Uh, the next thing you want to do is find the services, uh, the service available for your plugin. Um, plugin managers, if they're done correctly, should be implemented as a service so you can inject it into your code. So you want to find the service for the plugin that you want to use. And to use that, you use Drupal debug container and look for things called plugin.manager.something. Um, good plugins should follow that convention, plugin manager to make them easy to find. Um, I'm going to look at uh, block plugins for uh, my discussion here. Um, the plugin manager is just what it sounds like. It knows everything about the plugin type that you're trying to use, uh, how to find it, how to instantiate it, um, etc. So I've found my block plugin. Um, I found the service that I need is called plugin manager block. And now I want to see what plugins that manager knows about. So I call plugin get definitions. And here are the 25 plugins that block defines in core. So I look through there and I say, OK, I want to use a search form block. So I get my plugin manager. I find search form block. I call definition on search form block. And I get back this instance of a search form block class. Um, I can use any of the uh, methods that are in that search block class and use them in my code. So I call block build, and I now have a search block that I can pass along in a render array or you know, pass along to my page and render it anywhere that I want to. Um, this is a lot like any other <coughs> You know, you find the service, start calling methods on it. But one of the cool things about a plugin manager service is however many plugins you've got of that type, you can use that same service over and over again to call whatever plugins you want uh, anywhere in your processing and get those and go ahead and use them. Um, and as long as a plugin is discoverable, it's there for anyone else to use. So, plugin types. <clears throat> uh, when is a plugin type right for me? Um, you want to use a plugin type whenever you've got, uh, want to enable different ways of doing the same thing. Uh, so, the, as mentioned, the team I work with, we, have to, we write modules that are used by a lot of different websites, um, but we don't want to be, uh, we want to be pretty generic as far as the functionality. Um, a lot of the times we have a class, certain class that we'll need uh, to use, you know, to continue our processing, but we don't have any idea where the data is coming from on the brand site. So, what we'll do is we'll implement a plugin type. Uh, the brands then will go ahead and implement the plugin that they need to give us the data that we need from the sources that they have. So, how do we create a plugin type? Well, first, uh, let's go over what a plugin type consists of. Uh, it's pretty simple. Fours again. Uh, there's an interface that ensures that your plugins are all swappable. A base class that extends this interface and extends the uh, plugin base class. A plugin manager to keep track of the plugins. And then the annotation file. And this defines the properties of your plugin. And then you also, as mentioned before, you want to make your plugin a service. So um, <clears throat> for my example here, I'm going to use musicians. Um, I said, you know, you've got different ways of doing the same thing. Musicians do that. And musicians play songs. Um, there are, anybody know how many musical instruments there are in the world? Um, but, <laughs> so we've got musicians. So what we can do is implement a musician plugin type, and then when we want to have a different instrument, we just in implement a musician uh, plugin for that. So I'm going to I generate my plugin uh, using this Drupal generate plugin type annotation, and this will generate these four boilerplate files for me. Uh, I've got the annotation file. The uh, base file, interface, a manager, 
It also registers my manager as a service and then creates this directory inside of my module, uh, properly namespace according to how I've passed it in uh, when I ran that console command. And any other module now that wants to have a musician plug in, they'll put the same directory under their module structure and my plugin manager will be able to find it. So the most interesting pieces of these here um, is the plugin manager. Um, this is really pretty simple. The only function you need to have in here is the, construct, uh, the constructor here. Um, it tells Drupal that our musician plugins will be under plugin musician. It tells it where our interface, what the interface is that we're implementing, and also tells us, uh, tells it what annotation file to use. Um, the annotation file just says that, okay, this is a plugin, and then here are the attributes uh, that I want to have for my musician. I've just got them really simple here. A musician would obviously have a lot more than just a name and an instrument, but I don't want to list all that out. Um, so we just keep it pretty simple here. Um, if you need, need more than what you get from the default plugin manager, uh, there are a couple of traits here that can help you out a lot. Uh, the categorizing manager plugin trait for when you have plugins uh, based on a category key. There's a filtered plugin trait that allow filtering plugin definitions. And then the plugin dependency trait um, for calculating dependencies on the, of the plugins. Um, I haven't used any of these, so I can't really tell you a whole heck of a lot about them, but they're out there. So what is a plugin? Um, a, a musician is a plugin type. So a plugin would be a guitarist here, say, would be a plugin. Um, you can use the console if you want to generate the common plugin types, the ones that are in core. There's a Drupal list generate plugin function, and that, um, that'll list the plugins that the console can help you generate. If you don't have that, um, you'll have to, the recommended method is that you copy and paste from a working example of that plugin. Um, I don't have any of those, so I'm going to have to start from scratch here. So here's my, I'm, my first plugin is going to be for a guitarist, maybe because that's what I do. So I create a guitarist plugin. It's in the source plugin musician namespace, as you know, we saw specified earlier. Um, it says that this is a musician plugin type, and these are the attributes that my musician are, is going to have, and then I extend the musician plugin base, or the musician base. Uh, musician base would probably just have the would probably just have a play method. I don't really know. I haven't implemented the whole thing. But then now in my guitar class, um, I can extend that, and that would be all the methods that would be specific to playing guitar. So like tapping uh, various um, styles of playing guitar would go into there. Um, now that I've got that, anyone who wants to can go ahead and get my guitarist. They'll call them. Uh, the musician plugin manager, which we can think of as like a union rep, say, hey, go, go ahead and give us um, a uh, some musicians. So I ask the union representative for a guitarist. They give me a guitarist. Uh, my guitar starts playing Stairway to Heaven. Um, then you can do this very same thing for any other instruments that you want to have musicians for. Um, that's pretty cool, but I don't want just any guitar player. I want Mark Knopfler, I want Bonnie Raitt, I want Keb Moe, I want Wes Montgomery, I want somebody I know who can play. Um, so what am I going to do about that? <coughs> um, we can create plugins every time we want to have a new, <coughs> every time we want to have a new guitar player. That's kind of a drag. Uh, we have to create a JIRA ticket, we have to design, assign a developer to that ticket to implement the plugin, um, they have to file a PR, somebody has to re review that PR, we have to send our plug into QA. It's got to go through QA. We have to merge it into our master branch. And then we have to cut a release, all to have another guitar player. Um, this is kind of a drag. <laughs> and so is there something we can do about that? And fortunately, there is. Um, Drupal provides plugin derivatives. Now, plugin derivatives, these are just plugins that are derived um, from other from external data. So instead of having to go through a whole development cycle every time we want to have a new guitar player, we can put that over in somewhere where the editors can get at it. They can set up guitar players for us, and Drupal can just go ahead and use them. Um, a really good example of this in core is menus. 
Um, like when we looked at the blocks, there are 25 different block plugins because blocks do lots and lots of different things. Uh, menus basically do the same thing. They list items. Uh, so the way the menu plugin works is it uses derivatives. Um, menus are also entities. So what the menu plugin does, it loops through the, musician, the um, menu entities and creates a derivative instance for each of the different uh, menu entities that we've got. So how does that work for our guitar player? It's really simple. Um, all we have to do is inside of our annotation file, we just add this deriver key. We point that to a class that's going to, to contain the deriving, the derivative method, <laughs> the deriver methods, I can say that word. And then it'll give us derivatives for our various musician plugins. Um, the derivative, deriver class is really pretty simple. Uh, extends driver base, and the only method that we really need to have in here is get derivative definitions because that's the part that we know about. So for my first iteration here, I've created just got a manager, a musician, uh, too many M words, I'm sorry. Um, I've got a musician node content type. So what we do here, we load up all of my musician nodes, find the ones that or we don't load them all up. We find all the musician nodes where the instrument is guitar. Then we load all those up. We loop through those and create a uh, derivative instance for each one. And each one of those derivative instances substitutes the name and the instrument from the musician node for those defaults that we saw in the, in the uh, plugin definition. So instead of guitar guitarist and guitar, I can now have Mark Knopfler or Telecaster. Once I've got my derivatives set up, okay, now we go back to the union rep and we ask for get definitions. Um, now remember earlier when we looked at the manager, um, like the block plugin manager, we asked for get definitions and it shows us all the different block definitions. Um, now we call get definitions and pass it a parameter. Uh, behind the scenes, our plugin manager is going to find all the derivatives and it's going to return an array of guitar players for us. So now I've got, I see here that, oh, guitarist four is Mark Knopfler. So I ask the musician manager for guitarist four. Now I have Mark Knopfler and he can play money for nothing. Can you pass multiple parameters through that? Um, let's see, I don't know. I haven't tried that yet. I'm thinking not. Um, yeah, no, I, my guess would be not, um, but I'd have to play around with that some. Um, but uh, we still have a we still have a problem as you know we before we've still got you know how many guitar players in the room <laughs> for one and then how many in the world we can end up with a whole lot of guitar players uh, we don't want all of them to show up at once so what can we do about that uh, Drupal for that provides what they call plugin collections I uh, know what the collections do uh, is that wraps your plugin in a, in a wrapper and stores them so they can be lazily, lo lazily loaded later. It just keeps track of all your, all your configurations. And then later on, you ask for the plugin, specific plugin. It'll load up that configuration and give you the plugin that you want. So, so here we go. They store plugin configurations. Uh, these are best used when plugin instances are configurable. Um, things like blocks and views, if you look at a block, you can configure a block to show, it, show up in a section of your theme. You can assign it permissions, any number of different things. Uh, same thing with views. You can have view, you can have block views, page views, feed views. Um, these are all configurable. So these are really good candidates uh, for collections and blocks and views do indeed uh, provide, well, yeah, provide uh, collections. Um, these other, uh, other modules also uh, provide collections. And collections actually uh, came out of views um, because view plugins, the display plugins for views, are pretty heavy. So when you're creating a view, uh, you don't want to have to load up the, the page, uh, page display and feed display and everything if all you want to use is a block. So views in this ticket here, uh, came up with the way of lazy loading plugins and it ended up in collections. Um, so how do we make this work with the musician? That's actually kind of easy too. Um, all you have to do is create a, create a class 
that extends the lazy plugin collection class, which default lazy plugin does. Um, there was also a default single to single lazy plugin, um, and you can use that if you've got a, pl a plugin instance that just has one plugin. Um, now this, as I uh, have this shown as an experimental collection. Quite honestly, I have never made one of these. <laughs> I've read about them, and this is how it should work. <laughs> So um, I do know that the one thing you've got to have in there is a plugin key, and this is going to tell Drupal about the configuration that contains your plugin ID. So you've got that in there. Uh, the default lazy plugin collection has lots of other methods like forgetting plugins, adding plugins to the collection, initializing plugins. Um, again, if you want to see some really awful stuff with that, go ahead and look at the views display, uh, display plugin collection, and it's makes use of all of those things. But um, also looking at this, I mentioned those traits earlier. And while I'm thinking about these plugin collections, I'm thinking that my plugin manager would actually benefit here from categorizing plugin manager and filtered plugin manager. Uh, because not only do I not want to get all the guitar players at once, um, I don't want to get classical guitar players showing up at my audition if I want slash, right? So I would like to be able to filter my, pl I mean, my guitar players by style or whatever like that. But I don't have those in this iteration. That'll probably be in the next ticket. So once I've got uh, my collection, I can now, instead of calling the manager, I just go to the collection and I say, get my guitarists. I go here, again, guitarist four is Mark Knopfler. I have Mark Knopfler play Sultans of Swing. And with that, Good night, it's time to go home or to the next, <laughs> to the next session. So, um, that, really is, <laughs> that really is what I've got. Um, contact information here. If you want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through drupal.org or on LinkedIn. And I would also like to take this opportunity to give out a shout out to my Draco team for all of their support, encouragement, and inspiration in this. Lastly, uh, some resources. So the plugin API one at the top there is a really good overview of the plugin system. Uh, that API Drupal.org link there goes into a little more depth about what the plugin API shows. Um, I got a lot of good information from some articles written by this guy, Daniel Sipos, who's over in Belgium. Uh, he's got a web omelet blog that he writes, and he also writes a lot of really good tutorials uh, for SitePoint.com. So I recommend checking him out if you're looking for more information. Um, DrupalEyes.me, if you've got access to that, has some really good uh, resources on plugins, very, very in depth. And then lastly, the slides for the show, if you want to see all those groovy chords, uh, uh, code snippets again, uh, you can get them from the slides. And that's what I've got. So any questions? Um, <coughs> What it, what's the argument for using um, plugins over just like listing the entities? You know, like why why do they do that? Uh, mostly uh, plugins because it's they're standalone, so they're not de they're not dependent on anything. Is that? So like, um, I'm not sure what you mean about. Um, I haven't really. Oh. Into the code for the menu derivatives, mm -hmm. um, but you're saying that uh, the menus use. Uh, plug-in derivatives. Right? Oh, okay. Um, well, why list, you, you know, like usually you have like an entity list builder to mm -hmm. list out like nodes mm -hmm. or blocks or, you know, whatever. Oh. Uh, why, why, why use um, plugins to list out like the menu items and stuff? Um, well, this, what the, what the plugin does is actually gives you a usable instance of that menu. So you can get the list built. You can go through a listings page and see what the different ones are. What the when you have the derivatives, a, a derivative is an instance of that actual plugin. It just it just substitutes the attributes that are in the plugin definition for what you get out of the derivative. So when you you call a particular menu entity, you get the list of items in that menu entity that gets passed into that derivative. And then you have that, you've got that menu, then you have, you've got a menu object that you can then uh, stick into your template. Um, you know, like now why you would do that instead of using blocks, you know, because you can do a lot of this stuff with blocks. You could have a menu block or whatever. So um, if you're fine with the UI, you can just, a lot of this stuff you can just do with blocks. Um, a lot of us like doing stuff in code instead. <laughs> so, so there you go. So instead of having to, so again with blocks, instead of going into your UI, 
and creating or grabbing a block in your UI and putting it in a in a uh, section of the page, you can just call the block manager, find the block that you want to use, get an instance of that, and then you've got a block that you can stick into code and put it anywhere you want. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And you're welcome. So, others? I can't have done that good a job. <laughs> or did I? <laughs> oh, well, well, all right then. Um, 20, 25 minutes, I might be the shortest thing in the <laughs> presentation in the whole thing. Um, but, no, thank you very much.